Hi everyone, this is Pierre from P2 Design. A couple of weeks ago, I introduced an add-on for Blender that I use extensively when animating. One of its use cases is the creation of fruit motion for game animation. But what if you can't afford the add-on, or if you just want to learn to do it with Blender's core animation tools? Well, let me show you. Root motion is used in video game to tell the engine where the character is. Often enough, the position of the character is defined by the engine. Using locomotion speed, for example, and syncing it with the walk or run animation playback speed. But in complex animations like an attack, a dodge, it can be very challenging to sync the position of the character with the animation using only the engine's tool. To solve that, the animator can be in charge of animating the root of the character directly in the DCC like Blender or Maya, and then this root motion is used as a reference by the engine. When creating the base animation, we generally don't move the root, because it will force the animator to counter-animate all the controllers on top of the root. What we do instead is following an animation chart based on the gameplay and it generally tells you the where and when, and sometimes the how. In that case, the how is a jump attack from the idle position, so I start with the idle pose. The game designers allow me for 5 frames of anticipation. Then the creature is supposed to hit its target on frame 15, after half a second, and the character is supposed to cover about 8 meters and the character is supposed to reset on frame 35 after about a second and land about 3 meters forward compared to its initial position. Once we know that, we can create the animation, eyeballing the position of the character. By the way, if you'd like to create this kind of animation in Blender, check out my animation course Alive on p2designacademy.com. The next step is to reference any controller that will be influenced by the root motion. You may want to select absolutely all the controllers, but that's not necessary. You generally need to select the inverse kinematics controller and the center of gravity. So just try, select those controllers and move your character in space. I get the same behavior as if I was moving the root bone. So in this specific case, that's enough. Now, if I rotate those controllers, you can see that the head of my character is unfollowing, because the rig is built that way. But since I won't be using the rotation to generate the root motion, I don't need to add the neck and the head to the list of controllers I want to source. To reference the motion of those controllers, we can use any kind of object. Most of the time we use empties because they are just a reference point, but I will use a mesh, a sphere with a color so that it looks a little better for this tutorial. So I will just create four of them, rename them as reference legs. From there I want them to follow the transformation of the leg controllers, so I will simply add to them a copy transform constraint targeting the armature and as a subtarget or bone target I will choose my IK controllers. And obviously I need to do that for the four controllers. Once I'm done, we can see that those four spheres are following the four IK controllers. From there, I will create a last sphere or last reference object. I will give it a nice red color and I will give it a copy transform constraint following the torso controller. Right now, whatever happened to those controllers, the object will follow. So if I move the root bone, the object will follow. So before I start playing with the root bone, I want to store the motion of those objects. And the simplest way is to bake the motion of those objects. I select them all, I press F3 to search for bake, and I will click on bake action. I want to use the visual keying of those objects, and I then want to get rid of the constraints so that they no longer follow the controllers. Blender recognizes we are baking objects data, and I just want to bake location, rotation, and scale. Once I click OK, Blender will create an action pair object, perfectly following the motion of the controllers. 
but those objects are no longer attached to the controllers. So we just referenced our animation onto separated objects. So now the idea is to make the root move. But if I offset the root or the armature object, we can see that our character is no longer following the animation of the objects. Well, to fix that, we just need to do what we did before on the object. In pose mode, select the torso controller and add to it a copy transform constraint. As a target, make sure you're referencing the reference torso. Also, be very careful to use a bone constraint, not an object constraint. So now if I play the animation, nothing changed. But if I move the root bone, we can see that the feet are following the root, but not the torso, it's following the object we are referencing. So we just need to do the same thing with the feet. I will add a copy transform constraint on each foot controller, targeting the corresponding reference object. If I now play the animation and I move the root bone, you can see that it doesn't change the position of my character. The animation remains the same wherever the position of the root bone. So we can now freely create the root motion. By the way, if you find this video useful, please leave it a like, a nice comment, and I hope you will subscribe. From there, creating the root motion is pretty straightforward. You could animate it directly in the graph editor following the character's position using the Y axis, or we can copy the location of the center of gravity of our character, the torso controller, but only along the Y axis, because we don't want the up and down motion nor, in that case, the left to right motion. Now the root is already animated and all the other controllers are following the reference objects. If you want to give this root motion a little polish, you could first bake the motion of the root. With the root bone selected, press F3 and search bake and click bake action. We want to use the visual keying, clear the constraint, and we also want to overwrite the current action. We don't want to create a current action only for the root. And here we are. Our root has no longer a constraint. And if I want, I can edit its animation curve to simplify it. For example, remove the anticipation in the motion of the root. The anticipation will still be there in the visual animation, but the root won't be going backward and forward. I can do the same on the reset or the landing and remove the back and forth motion. Once I'm happy with the root motion, you can see that the animation is exactly the same as the original one. I can select all the controllers involved, bake the action, but this time make sure I don't clear the parents. I just want to clear the constraint and overwrite the current action. And here we are, with exactly the same animation we had in the beginning, but now we have root motion that can be used in your game engine to drive the position of the character and get a very accurate game animation. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.